I'm 23. Came from America to Ghana. Uh, started up this business, Kadash. It's just like the fear of like not even being sure if you're going to come out of uh, interaction with a cop alive. When you live in this constant kind of anxiety, it, it gets a little too much sometimes. I will be honest, whenever I meet a young person in their 20s move to Ghana or Africa, my respect and admiration for them is another level. It's probably because I've always had a perception that it's a thing for the old. Or maybe I've just underestimated the younger generation. In this video, I speak to Yasmin, a young American who's moved to Ghana to run a laundry business. She says starting a business in Ghana is easier. You will be inspired. People will try to take advantage of you. I don't want to go back to America. My name is Mickey. Keep watching. I'm, I'm Yasmin. I came from America to Ghana. Uh, started up this business, Kadash, here. And um, I, I really like it here. I like it here in Ghana. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 23. 23? Yeah. And you started um, a business. Yeah. So what, what, what has been the journey? What is your background? Yeah. Where did you grow up? I, I grew up traveling around in the States because of um, my father was in the military. So he gets deployed here, here, here. So I also get <laughs> got transferred here, here, and here. And... Uh, I spent a lot of time with different people in my family because they're spread through the states. So when I say where was I raised, it's like, <laughs> I guess, in different states in America. Uh, I am a soldier. I don't know if your mom told you. So I'm I didn't know this. So my kids also moved around for, mm. for a bit. As a soldier, I'm always thinking, how does it feel for my kids? Because they are young, but you are of age. Mm. How does it feel? to be, we call it past brat, and you, how does it feel? Uh, my, my father is already retired from the military, so I don't have to worry about that. The, um, coming to Ghana was our choice, so it wasn't a deployment, it wasn't military. We chose to come here. Um, in the early days, I don't think I thought about it that much when I was young. I just thought it was fun to travel. I always liked traveling going from place to place, you know, and seeing new things, meeting new people. So you enjoyed it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, sometimes it was hard to say goodbye to some things, but uh, I guess I kind of got used to that. You know, there's always contact with people that you leave, that, you, that you've left. You know. So I've never lived in, in America before, but all I hear is racism in America. Racism. Yeah. Do you have any experience that you can share? I, I would prefer not to go into detail for that, but I've definitely experienced it like I'm sure any other uh, black American has experienced it. Uh, you know, with the police brutality, the, um, it's just like the fear of like not even being sure if you're going to come out of uh, interaction with a cop alive, even though you haven't done anything wrong. It's that kind of thing. It's even at the schools, it's, it's a dangerous place. And uh, when you live in this constant kind of anxiety, it, it gets a little too much sometimes. And there's of course nice folks in America, just as there's nice folks in Ghana or any other place. But America in particular, I think people who don't live there underestimate uh, how dangerous it can be, and it's it's a it's a constant worry. There's like some close calls that I have had, and I'm only 23, so it's 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 very prevalent in America. And even when I try to tell folks here in Ghana about it, I try to warn them. You know, follow your dreams when you want to go somewhere, but you have to be careful. So how long have you been in Ghana now? I've been four years now. Well, no, three, three and a half, I'd say. Three and a half years now, yeah. Okay, so why Ghana? Why Ghana? Um, I'd say it was because of the right of return. 
because you remember that event. Uh, our people were taken as slaves from this coast mostly, uh, not this coast, uh, what is it called? Cape Coast? Yeah, Cape Coast. Uh, mostly, and taken to America, and this seems like a good start. Uh, it's also, um, it's a fairly easy transition as well, compared to, say, going to Cote d'Ivoire next door because of learning French, for example. Um, though I do know some French, but... <laughs> uh, we spent some time there, actually, first, before going to Ghana, um, in a transitional period, and I have to say, I, uh, it is easier in Ghana, just communicating. I am learning some tree, uh, but it's a slow process. <laughs> so was it always your plan, or was it something your mom and dad uh, spoke you into? They didn't have to speak me into it. Uh, I had just graduated college uh, shortly before we moved, and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. So a lot of it was, well, I could do this, I could do that, but I didn't feel too confident in the financial security of the States, for example. It's very expensive living there, and that's another thing people underestimate is just how expensive it is. You can earn the money and then you lose it uh, just for things that you don't even own, you know. But I wasn't too sure and they were planning for about a year or two to come to Ghana. And I, I thought about it and I was like, should I come with or should I stay here? But ultimately I chose. They asked me. They never talked me into it. They just asked me. They said, would you like to come with us to Ghana? And I said, I'll go with you. You know, I'll, I'll follow you to Ghana. So. So young Jasmine, um, growing up in America, you know, friends over there. First day, just picture the first day you got to Ghana. What was your first impression? And how has it been? So I got to Ghana the first day. Uh, it was a very eventful day because the VIP bus actually broke down. So, And it was nighttime too. So we were... It was a little bit of a rough journey getting in, but uh, we were tired, we made it to a hotel, we slept, and the next day we saw it was a nice sunny day and it felt like a fresh start, you know? It felt, it felt like New Year's or something. Like, it's a fresh new day, we've come back from a fairly exhausting trip. Um, we look outside and we think it's actually very beautiful. It's very nice. Um, we had a friend here who helped us out, who helped us find a place and showed us around. We went to the cultural center. So I thought it was beautiful and I thought it was just a lot of new, fresh things to me. It, it actually made me nostalgic about when I was traveling because after my dad retired, we stopped for a while, and settled down in South Carolina for a long while and I did kind of miss the traveling. <laughs> so that was kind of, I can't say that it was the time that it really sunk in that I was in Africa in the first place because I didn't even really process it when I was in Cote d'Ivoire. I was thinking, I'm definitely here, but I think it took me about a month or two in Ghana before I finally process it. And I'm like, wow, I'm in Ghana, you know? <laughs> but the first day, a lot happened and I, I didn't really like, you know, I didn't fully process it yet, but I was still amazed at all of the new things. Has it lived up to your expectation? I can't say I had that, uh, what's the word? Because I don't say, I didn't have low expectations either. Um, I knew that it wasn't the same stereotypes that they say in America, which I, I never really believed that. I thought, I always thought like, you know what they show and, and they show for their charities and stuff and they make you think that that's all uh, Africa is, even though it's this vast continent with a lot of different cultures, a lot of different countries, uh, with a, so much variance in it. But they, America, the media kind of just groups it all up into one. But uh, I knew that wasn't it. 
but I actually didn't fully know what to expect. We saw a lot of videos of Ghana, so there were some things I knew to expect. Uh, but I can't say that I had like a, like a specific bar because when I was traveling when I was young, I was always just kind of ready to be surprised. <laughs> and I guess that carried over. So Yasmin in Ghana now, what is your purpose? What is the goal? What will stop you from going back to America? Well, for one, this business is one of them that keeps me here. I, I like this business. It, it's significantly easier to start a business here than in America, even though it's still a very difficult process. But uh, this is one of them. I enjoy running this place. I enjoy the people that I've met here. People are very sweet. And uh, I, I don't want to go back to America. A lot of people ask me, they're like, when are you going back to America? And they ask me why I don't want to go back. And I think the key, like the big thing about it is the peace. Uh, I spent a lot of my life in America stressed and worried. And America is a very stressful place to be in. Um, and as things are right now, from what I see on the news, it's not getting any better. So when I come here, I, I feel at peace. I feel much more at peace. When you are in America, I don't know how to put this, but as, as a black person, when I'm in America, I know that I am walking outside and I am a black person in America. But here, I, I, am, I know that there is a difference between us because um, we speak different languages, we come from different upbringings, but I can still feel more free walking around here. And that's a very, very valuable thing, you know. How do you mention uh, the longer, what's the name, is it Kadash? Yes, Kadash. 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 It means, it means set apart. Set apart. So we are set apart from the other services. We have a, a different standard and we, we, try to, we try to go above and beyond with our service, basically. How did Kadash come about? Uh, well, I wasn't the one who named this company. I inherited this company after my father, but I actually was working with this company uh, and helping with its upbringing at first. Uh, but he chose the name. He chose the name. And it, yes, it means, it means set apart in, in Hebrew, Paleo-Hebrew. So the oldest version of the Hebrew language. So what are some of the challenges and what are some of the good things about starting a business in Ghana and running a business <laughs> in Ghana? Uh, there are a lot of challenges. Uh, one of the biggest ones um, I would say is that even the people who uh, like help with running businesses or the tax folks and stuff, you have to be wary and you have to be careful because no matter where you are, there are people who try to take advantage of you. Um, there are people who try to scam you. But as long as we stay vigilant, it can, we can overcome. And obviously we have overcome that. Uh, oh, it's, it's also a lot more paperwork than people think it is. <laughs> Even for just laundry, there is so much paperwork involved, but it's still something you can manage. Um, but the other challenges, I don't know. It's, it's been pretty nice, actually. Yeah. And what went into her training and what do you think contributed? I think, um like uh, traveling before uh, with the mil being in the military, that helped. Um, also, she's able to do pretty much what she was able to do in the States, um, as long as there's an internet connection <laughs> as far as that kind of thing, yeah. I, I think part of our training too, we, we raised her a certain way. I know, I know, I always try to raise her to be independent and believe in herself. You know, and I always tell her, you can do anything. 
you, you, you put your mind to. And I believe that to this day. I think anyone is only limited to what they believe they can do. So they make their own limits, put it that way. So with her, it's also her, her raising up understanding about scripture and uh, understanding the most high is her, always her lead and the father is her guide. You know, I'm her father, but the, the true father who is in heaven, you know. So she understand that I put myself behind him, even to her, she being, <laughs> being her father. She look at, she seek him first, she understand him first, and, and if she understand him, then she would give me the respect that I need and that I want, because he demands her to do that for me. But still, the Most High is still in charge. So we have an understanding. She has always had an understanding about Scripture, and, and that was a great, big part of her life. Because one of the things I do, I do teach the Scripture, and, um, and I, I teach it correctly. And um, I know this is not about me or my family, but we do believe that we are Israelites according to the scripture. So we teach the Torah, we teach the understanding. So she has an understanding of hard work and, and, and she understands who she is. And part of being a better you is knowing who you are. And she knows who she is. So she's always going to be strong, she's always going to be successful, and she always going to, she's already smart, she's a very smart young lady. So I don't see nothing stopping her in this world, nothing. So it's just a matter of her grabbing hold to it and, and, and pulling it down to her, or rising up to it. Sometimes you got to pull it down, sometimes you got to rise up to it. But it's going to be one way or the other. And, 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 and that is her journey, you know. And this shop is her journey. You know, this business is her journey. This is a journey she's going to take to be the better her. And I know that, and I know she's going to do a great job at it. So how is she, do you think she's doing, and what are you two doing to help? Okay, she's, she's very quiet, so... I've seen her actually in, in action with her employees and she does take charge. She's doing very well with that. I'm very proud of her. Um, we, like my husband started, my husband started the um, business and then uh, we all worked together to make it, get it started. But um, now it's under her, she's actually the CEO now, so she's the owner. and. Um, so that's how he started it up. And we all contributed by uh, just helping get it running and helping get the employees here and everything like that. So um, I help her with the paperwork and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> she, she, has a, she has another location. She also has a consignment store uh, that, that you, uh, that, if you are out there in the diaspora, you can, um, if you got things you want to sell and you want to sell to other people from the diaspora, you can bring it to her shop. You get a small commission off of it, but, but you can bring anybody. it. Huh? Anybody can buy it. It's anybody can buy it. I'm talking <laughs> about if you got something you want to sell, you bring it to her, she sells it, and she, she gets a small commission off of it for uh, being an outlet for you to buy. So, so. With that, you know, she's expanding her businesses, you know, and um, this is one of many businesses she's going to have. She's young. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do know that. It's just a matter of time. So, you know, she, she, she worked on this one, then she'll start working on, on many more. You know, as far as me, you know, I ain't going to lie, I'm old and I just want to retire. So my daughter has it. What, what, what should I expect when I use your service? Uh, you should expect very high quality service. You should expect the, the laundry to come out nice, soft and clean with a nice sweet smell. Um, a lot of folks like it for the sweet smell. Um, we, have, we have a great ironing service. We also have a cleaning service for even houses and office buildings as well, carpet cleaning. We can do that as well and be, have an arrangement for it. So we do, we do more than laundry, but I, I have a specific standard for laundry because being in America, 
they do have their laundry services and they're very like they can be expensive and highbrow and I've seen it and I want to have that same kind of quality at an affordable price you know we also have very good prices and we still want to put out our very best we use we use machines uh, as well as hand washing if the clothes are too delicate for a machine um, but the dryer especially it has them coming out softer than if you'd sun dried and hung it I'm Derek Oseyajima. Yeah, yeah. Kadash Laundry Services, yeah. How did you get to work with Kadash? Oh, like, uh, a friend introduced me to them that uh, they are looking for an employer. So if I'm interested, I should come around and see if I qualify for the job. So um, I think he gave me their number and I called them to find out um, if it's true that they are looking for an employer. So I called and my boss picked and he said that uh, the next morning if I can show up at the office for an interview. So I did that and I came to the office and they did everything and I was qualified to be in this company. Okay, so if somebody came to Kadash to do their laundry service, what, what would they expect? Oh, what I would say is that uh, we always um, make sure your items are in a good shape like we, we provide the quality and everything like uh, when it comes to like our delivery and pickup services um, you make sure we always get your stuffs in time you, you get it in time when you need it and like we make sure the item that you've bought like it, it will smell good that you will like it you understand yeah and like there hasn't been a day like somebody has come here to complain about he's having an issue or something like that yeah even i think um last last two months that we were having some light problems around this area we still try to use our generator to make sure that our client gets the best out of everything that we do here so okay kadash laundry services we have our another branch at tech camp uh, Opsit Continental Supermarket. We are on top of the building. I think we are close to a, a boutique over there. Yeah, and over at Jache, we are at downtown uh, guest house. Yeah, around here, We're close to the uh, washing bay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, washing bay. Yeah, there's a washing bay. Yeah, yeah. So, and we have our soundboard posted here. So, so if you are to advise young person in America who is thinking of coming to Ghana, what would their advice be? Always do your research. I'd say always do your research on anything that you're getting into, especially starting a business. Look fully into it. Look at what the other people in the area you're thinking about are doing. Think about who is there. Is it, is it a student area like the um, Kunst? area? Uh, is it uh, an area like Adako Jachi? Are there a lot of hostels around? You have to always consider. And if you come from America, there are a lot of markets that are actually untapped here. And I think that they should, um, they should actually work on those. There's, there's so many opportunities here. So always do your research and be vigilant. Um, People will try to take advantage of you, but people will take, try, try to take advantage of you in America, and I'm sure anybody who lives there knows that for certain. In fact, in America, they're very sneaky about it. So coming here, it's, it's sometimes easier to see, but sometimes it's still, you still get caught on it. So just vigilance, research, and uh, know that Know that you'll you'll come out of this okay. All right. Don't don't stress. Just if you stress, then you can't think right, and then you can't you can't proceed. You know. So. So finally, finally, <laughs> what sort of mentality does a person, a young person like yourself, would need to possess to one live in Ghana to run a business in Ghana? It's a good question. Um, 
I'd say you have to really, you have to have a really go-getter attitude. You have to seize the day, take opportunities when they come. Because um, on the times that I have hesitated, it has caused more problems than benefits. Uh, you, you have to be ready to sometimes uh, feel a bit alone, if that makes sense. And there's plenty of very kind people here as well. But when you're first starting out, when you go into any new place, when you're first starting out, it can feel very isolating. And that's where the go-getter attitude comes in. And you have to take opportunities to make friends. You take opportunities to make connections. Um, you, you take opportunities because if you help people out, they'll help you out, you know? So you, you have to very, you have to just have that go-getter attitude, is what I'd have to say, definitely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. How do you feel?